Welcome everyone to this breaking news. As usual, quite some stuff to say, which, which is why it's maybe not bad that we every other day we have some news shout out. And um, so let's get right into it. The most breaking news just out uh, a couple of minutes ago, or something like that, I guess, at least, or is it August? Okay, maybe already some days older, just it came to my attention just a couple of seconds ago that Apple is seeking to shut down Corellium perfect replica of iOS, which I have to disagree with quite some quite some levels. First of all, it's not a replica, it's virtually the KVM also Mac OS virtualization and stuff, fun stuff like that, that even nowadays uh, Linus Tech Tips is using there on their channel for virtualizing on more performant well, virtualized Hackintosh kind of thing. So it's, as far as I know, a replica. It would also not make so much sense. So what does it allow the service, if you never most likely heard about this? Corellium allows you to run iOS in a virtual machine. Mostly, I think they say for security research, but you could also use this for app development and automated testing and fun stuff like that. In my opinion, amazing service. This should be more like official. It is said that we need third parties for this, also with a lawsuit. And uh, by the way, there was a drawing issue in case you've seen this. A couple of drop frames. Anyway, so yeah, not fun. Also, the big companies always need to sue. In my opinion, Apple should rather buy them, which maybe they tried, maybe they wanted too much money. But virtualized iOS, virtualized ARM, certainly worth some hundreds of millions. So yeah, uh, amazing people who have done this amazing achievement uh, running iOS virtualized. I wonder if they have virtualized all the power VR and later other Apple own GPU stuff. No idea there on that front. I do not have too much insight of how this works. But of course, this is misleading, right? Perfect replica. It's not a copy. They are right here somewhere. Yeah, also uh, subscription payable. Thank you very much. But um, they write here somewhere copyright infringement and copying their uh, copy the operating system and which in my opinion as far as I've seen not really well of course the licensing thing as you cannot purchase iOS independently a little bit fishy but then if they I, I don't know their service in detail one way to get a little bit around this might be to have those people upload the firmware from Apple they want to analyze themselves so that they do not distribute this, but again, a little bit near. Yeah. But this is a new age of end user license agreements of digital rights management that you don't even own your copy of the OS anymore. And then even this kind of, yeah, one way around this might be if they don't make this as a web service, but provide the software to the people and the security researchers need to load their copy of iOS. But yeah, then again, I'm not into these details, just pointing out couple of obvious things and thoughts here. And as we are at this story, it would also have been amazing that in the Oracle case a couple of years ago, the, the court would have ruled more clearly with, uh, I think it was Oracle versus Google with the Java license for Android. The first judge, as far as I remember, ruled that this is AP is, API is not a copyright violation. And unfortunately, they were in a higher instance than overruled, as far as I remember. I really said, in my opinion, this API should not be like copyrighted and especially for the sake of interoperability, should be allowed for other people to implement the same API um, for all the, also, all the obvious cases like Windows, but having Windows API implemented in Wine and other stuff also means that this should be legally allowed for macOS this is also the double standard of people always yeah but windows windows and then if it happens to apple like virtual machine um, the same people who want to run windows in a virtual machine on their mac those who say yeah, but yeah this should be illegal because copyright yeah, but why should it be illegal to run ios in a virtual machine or mac os or implement mac os apis if it's legal with one court cases on the windows side so yeah, yeah just some thoughts in similar Apple news, as we already at Apple news, um, the T2 stuff, the Apple's T2 coprocessor stuff was more reverse engineered and deciphering messages of the Apple T2 
co-processor here and I've seen this already days ago. This is very interesting also certainly not only for security but also for having this stuff usable in Linux. There you see, and yes, this is also open standards, right? Why I would never buy this, not only vendor login and repairability with SSD soldered on the PCB and stuff, but even having superb Linux support, right? You have say, some coprocessors that prevents you to use Linux a little bit. And on top of this, it has all those functions that do not work then that you paid for, which, which I would not pay for. So it's here some remote XPC interprocess communication mechanism apparently. Um, used here just scrolling over this as we want to keep this relatively brief. They wrote here some, um, all right, maybe it's even um, even shipping. So even in user libexec, Apple ships a feature which utility inter to interrogate uh, and interface with a remote XPC facility uh, called remote control. The, the more you know here, which is certainly why I want to live stream here fun stuff, including uh, Netcat, uh, Heartbeat, Trampoline, Echo Bros, Dump State, and lists fun stuff like this with this iBridge. If you ever wanted why your Mac has this iBridge thing, that is why. And uh, yeah, totally not a fan of this. Um, as I said in the other microkernel live stream, more multi CPU, multi server microkernel stuff would be amazing, but then in an open standard, not with this Apple for the security proprietary stuff here. This also has stuff, I think, for speech recognition, obviously. So this, uh, to, to discover and communicate with this advertised services, the T2 exposes itself makers as a network interface assigned to EN6 in our lab machine. So yeah, you have an, I, I, I don't even own such a Mac, right? I, I have so zero like negative interest in this. I would not even shed my heart and money on this. Where Apple already took 30% of it, but <clears throat> yeah, so you can run a uh, net a Wireshark or other TCP dump stuff on it and have here all this fun communication. Um, HTTP2, which just the other day we saw security stuff with all the streams and chunked and whatnot, decoding message layers. So fun stuff Apple invented there. Also, do we really want to have such a complexity on the firmware level uh, from all the security news and stuff? Probably not. XPC wrapper fields so magic, flex, body links, message ID, payload. Um, here's some nicely readable you and magic flex and stuff you name it heartbeat requests yeah so if you wanted to implement this if you are so unlucky to own such a machine and want to implement in BSD or Linux there you have it I would not suggest to buy in this kind of stuff but here is the magic um, they analyzed quite some stuff and yes yeah, security by obscurity right eventually people figure this out which actually this is so simple in a way if you would take a look with even I should have found this if I would have taken an educated look there but yeah there are need to be people that I want to give a shout out amazing work here from the duo folks here to take a look and yeah I'm, I'm wondering as as much as in plain sight this is I wonder that nobody else so far has taken a closer look into this and if you're into this fun stuff uh, here's a website for you to take a closer look. They have also written quite some tools here, I think, um, somewhere here in, in tooling and whatnot. It would be here, I guess, uh, following the demo for security. Uh, so yeah, so there's some Apple T2 XPC stuff they wrote with Python and whatnot uh, for you to enjoy and play along at home. Also, I don't really um, promote buying into this kind of stuff. Welcome everyone in the audience. Good morning. Uh, here some one hour ahead of uh, Central Europe. I hope my VPN tunneling doesn't break while we go through this. Let's rush a little bit before our set VPN tunnel breaks for YouTube streaming here out of the um, fine democratic state of Russia. Project Zero, more news down the rabbit hole from the amazing Project Zero team at Google. Of course, here's a, one of those famous uh, which name I write now? Where is this? Ah, Travis. Of course, Travis um, or Mundy, also a security researcher um, and what uh, research over engineer. Amazing stuff. So they've taken, taken a look, as they often do, right? They, they just poke in something in Windows and muddy stuff they found. And uh, this week or last month or so, they have taken a closer look at some 
message passing and um, found some horrible stuff here where with some this is in some I think this was like event posting here in this event handling or something and uh, exactly this kind of stuff that you would also need to take a look at in microkernels for what kind of messages are allowed because um, there are some kind of messages and quite so many messages were passed there without um, yeah, message numbers or the usual stuff of VM user and integer messages for private window classes, VM application and uh, reserve for the system and string and there's so um, hex zero, uh, C00 through FFF string messages for use by application. And ooh, string messages, the documentation points me to register window message. Oh, something must be explicit along those messages. And tr let's track down the culprit. Um, putting down a breakpoint there, register window message. Something in this fun, good old Windows garish invented amazingness. And um, turns out this is the CTF part of Windows test, text services framework. And um, exactly those when I, I in all those live streams, if you are a recurring subscriber, I was actually debugging around myself there because this message service framework is exactly for our own runtime to display what I mentioned already, display this Asian and such Chinese character picking stuff at the right location, still couldn't get this to work, was actually looking at this message as whatever magic I, I was spending a week on just this, getting this Asian uh, pinjin and stuff uh, character input at the right location, still haven't found it in one week because yeah, stuff and exactly this here. So this works with our exact scan, exact code runtime, just that this doesn't appear there. Probably should ping those amazing security researchers. So why is this relevant? Turns out, understanding the CTF protocol, turns out this is not um, like properly security marshaled and this proxy stuff is going through here from one window to the other, including the login log window. So basically you can send from any window to the higher privileged login window, send messages, and this is full of security vulnerabilities as usual, as old old Microsoft code apparently allegedly as so often. And so yeah, uh, that should be a nice attack surface. Yeah, obviously as so many things in Windows, and maybe open source Linux, but whatever. So exploiting CTF with uh, CFF privileged processes, but including the login window dialog, um, you can uh, exploit security vulnerabilities with sending some messages, amazing stuff. And um, yeah, some of those low hanging fruits Microsoft has already fixed in yesterday's or so security update, message passing stuff left and right. Um, old bugs, decade old bugs uh, hanging there in the open and yeah, why we need more secure stuff. And if you write a new operating system, maybe do not send un, um, unsecured and unvalidated messages left and right because certainly you will have quite some security vulnerabilities. In similar news, Google wants, wants developers um, that all their Android apps require three days of approval, exactly this fun stuff that I pointed out already quite a couple, and now we get some drop frames, um, pointed out already quite some times, things are not so much more amazing on the Google side of views here. So when you are in this locked wallet garden and re rely on your income, then yeah, this really sucks when they change stuff. So now they not only take three days like Apple, plus minus give or take, they also took away scheduling the release of the app. Also really annoying if you have major feature releases or want to synchronize the release of your version of Instagram or whatever your app might be through all the platforms. Again, recurring reminder, just like I usually call out here on the Apple side, why this is not amazing. And worse than Apple, Google apparently does not even ex offer a way to expedite the review, say like we had a, urgent bug that we could at least query Apple, like hello, here's some urgent thing that we would need to expedite at Apple. You sometimes can do this, not that this would be, it can still be re rejected, right? You have some emergent bug issue and then it gets rejected like it happened to us, like we do not approve this. Exact scan and exact scan pro have the same icon, which is not allowed anymore. Like seriously, what the heck? This was no issue for seven years. 
and then you get your security update rejected with uh, you cannot have duplicate icon. So yeah, just the same stuff if you were thinking stuff is more amazing at Google than at Apple, not really. And also I wonder stuff was relatively okay-ish in the App Store of a Play Store of Google and then they need to make it worse. Always wonder what's up with companies that they make stuff worse. Speaking about worse, AI startup boom raises questions, writes as a Wall Street Journal of all journals, uh, exaggerated, exaggerated, tech savvy. And we had this already here, call of Google and Apple and Facebook using white collar sweatshops. They are outsourced their transcribing of um, speech input. In some cases, even Facebook, maybe even without the users con sent or knowledge and on the Google and Apple side I called out that I don't find this okay that they make research on the user and additionally uh, at external sites and I said already multiple times they should have done this in-house with their own testing department and not on Google, Google uh, user data but here they rightfully just like I always questions and we had this already like this Google AI duplex stuff or whatever this super advanced speech recognition stuff run there by humans and not by machine learning so much to we are amazing in machine learning and then humans are doing it fun times here and um, so they write a startup engineer says it's using artificial intelligence technology to largely automate the development of mobile apps but several current and former employees say the companies exaggerate their AI capabilities to attract customers and investors complaining um, competing complaints reflect the growing challenge in tech world of assessing a company's um, abilities there in artificial intelligence and um, it's the same with Google right Google says yeah, our I think it was called duplex or something making their reservations with even the AI supposedly saying um, um, like bridging the time looking stuff up and yeah this is exactly the same thing with Apple and Google when they keep this in secrecy and say yeah, this is amazing and then Reality as it is not and everyone believes into this reality distortion field. Speaking about reality distortion field, especially at Intel, TSMC started to block of all the amazing big companies, uh, even there, the head of global marketing. And of course, why do they do this here's marketing, obviously. But nonetheless, they say here the Moore's law is not dead. I mean, fun fact, the first blog post of them ever, and then it is about the Moore's Moore's law is not dead. Moore's law, of course, that the performance of CPUs doubled every 18 months or what it was, which was or later two years. And um, they basically say, no, this is still ongoing when we have in the last decade seen this was not accelerating as much anymore with even Intel struggling with the latest uh, process nodes there, seven nanometer or 10 or seven or what all those were. Um, TSMC, of course, huge marketing. I find it interesting nonetheless that they say this. They also call out here for this chiplet stuff, like smaller chiplets to be combined on some interposer substrate layer. Something just like AMD Horizon is doing to improve yield. If you have very small chiplet, then of course, if there is a dust spot or uh, in the lens of the lithography or whatever, um, some manufacturing defect, uh, if you have very large chips then the whole chip obviously is defect unless you can fuse of a core with these chiplets that AMD is using and then of course if half of them are defect this is still better than the whole wafer is defect if the chips would be larger as they were before. So plenty of interesting stuff basically they say ultraviolet stuff is on the roadmap. However I still call some question marks here how far we can really shrink and develop this. Um, but time will certainly show. In, I only wanted to give a shout out here, maybe not all lost or so, but certainly, probably, this is of course a marketing stunt here and certainly all of those companies invest big in the next big whatever optical um, and um, all this, whatever the next revolution in, in this regard is. And certainly for you, if you want to work in this field, there's certainly for the future a lot of stuff to come if we want to keep Moore's law here at work. Speaking about of Moore's law and at work, Craze building a supercomputer to manage US nuclear stockpile. Um, why do I call this out? Two things, not only I think it was then most likely anyway, 
but uh, in stupid names, right? They name, named this El Capitan, of course, from this huge mountain range there. But similar to stupid code names that I recurrently call out here, we have comments in the audience that I will get to in a second. Um, calling this exactly like an operating system from Apple, there you see how stupid are these code names. Well, in the supercomputer stuff, it doesn't really matter, probably because they are the only ones using this. But if you refer to something, then El Capitan was some OS release. Now, well, it was a mountain. Now it's an OS release. Now it's a supercomputer. Just exactly why I find this stupid naming stupid. And um, yeah, of course, uh, extra flops here of was it AMD or do they not write here? Anyway, uh, you heard it here, some supercomputers coming with whatever they may or may not have disclosed here. But um, yeah, 600 million Capitan expected to go into production in late 2023. Also, fun fact, you sometimes find pieces of sup former supercomputer gear on eBay or other state auctions. So if you're looking for some cheap Intel uh, Intanium and fun stuff like this, I, by the way, fun fact, I hope they usually auction this, not that they just put this to the recycling instantly because certainly playing uh, with the silicon might be fun. Although if you have full boards, probably sometimes hard to get them into operation if they have some special uh, connector stuff for some rig mounted special whatever. But nonetheless, um, yeah, this is also yeah recycling, not amazing of the supercomputer stuff after just some five or 10 years. In operation, if it's outdated, then yeah, if this is all special, special purpose connector and backbone stuff, then yeah, not really easy to reuse and recycle. Let's see, nice, finally caught alive here. Yeah, welcome, uh, act like loss can't change. Um, let's see if it doesn't relative, doesn't bend to, yeah. Um, also, yeah, uh, also quantum computing, right? So, so much fun stuff living in such uh, fun times. You see, if you look outside of this smartphone stuff, so much amazing news, which is why I started to do this here, obviously, and uh, calling out here the more interesting stuff and thoughts. And certainly there needs to be something, right? There are only the semiconductor stuff we can only make so small. I wonder how many 17 or 17 or 70 or how many atoms are left at this kind of scale. Certainly not many, and as much as we shrink this, the less, the few it becomes. So, really looking forward to optical or quantum computing stuff and whatnot. And WeWork IPO filing shows it's losing nearly five thousand two hundred dollar per customer. The recurring startup shout out here that I really find funny how these companies can be alive. My company certainly would already be bankrupt. And there you see the difference, right, of small, unsuccessful couple of handful company that is my company, but yet we make profit, right, and um, paying taxes, unless other companies who invade them to ocean islands. And uh, I really find this so mind-blowing to run a company losing nearly $5,200 per customer. This is hilarious, right? Um, certainly couldn't run my company one year with this kind of... Setup, but this is also a recurring shout out. Yes, startups, not only AI, but also other stuff. And um, yeah, yeah pre preparing the initial public offering this year. You have been warned, you have heard it here. Also, the sale of Tumblr recently from Yahoo to whatever. And uh, yeah, be careful what you invest to. Um, and yeah, they are on track of losing 2.7 billion this year from its operations, from nearly 1.7 billion last year. Like. Seriously, what the heck? I mean, why is this company still alive? I mean, I understand. Um, of course, Amazon also didn't make lots of profit for a long time, but at least they invested this in data centers and, well, ripping their employees off. But, um, well, at least they invested into AWS and all this other fun IT stuff. But this company here, yeah, not really sure. This, this looks a little bit failing to me. And um, But leave me in the comments below if you find this business operations amazing. Um, speaking about peak bugs, Microsoft Surface Pro 6 and Surface Book 2, yeah, devices throttle locked at 400 megahertz at the speed of a Pentium 2. Uh, yeah, fun technology in 2019 for 200, right? Why I don't buy new Surface Pros and instead went here with some, I hope it doesn't switch off though with all the dongles hanging out of here. Amazing ThinkPad. I certainly only 
buy you such amazing devices where you can service something and they are not glued. I have a surface, I made videos about the surface, I have touch disease in my surface Pro 3 and I had two surfaces. I will not buy a new one, Surface 2, Surface 3 for the Linux testing, Linux tablet stuff, but while the Surface 2 still works, it had a Wacom digitizer. The Surface 3 has a Entrick digitizer, which most of them have dead zones and phantom touches, not amazing. They are glued. I would never, this was a failure. I learned my lesson. I will not buy this ever again, especially for the glued in stuff. So even if I wanted to open it and take a look, I can't even open it without a heat gun and prying it open and usually breaking the glass as you have seen on iFix it. So you can watch the videos somewhere there. And um, apparently there is a bit, we can also learn from something I've never heard about this bit. So you see even from this mainstream news, even I learn new bits and I learn a lot of bits. Um, but even this bit, so there's apparently a CPU flag called the BD um, Pro, Pro Hot bidirectional processor hot, which can be set by any peripheral telling the processor to throttle down in order to decrease system temperatures. Yeah, here you have it live on my channel. Not only Apple MacBooks, book, MacBooks are, which we can for fun, not only Apple MacBooks are heavily throttling, also surfaces, no surprise there small ultra thin glued together stuff. Don't buy it, vote with, your wallet, vote with your wallet. I made a video even how to improve the design, just put a couple of torque screws or whatever in the back and make it not glued, make it, oh, what is a problem to have the eight screws, allow removing the back plate to service it. I will understand this, I don't get this glued together, except, well, we have Friday for future, right? Do we have, we have Friday, Friday, Fridays for future, right? And then all the major companies like Microsoft, um, Microsoft, Apple, and even Samsung Note and even Galaxy stuff, all is glued. Even this not, well, mostly a fan, at least it is half the price of Apple stuff, but not a fan that it's glued. But yeah, you can get it open. It's not the worst thing, but seriously put some screws in there. I made a Surface and iPad screws video. You find it below there. So yeah, learn something from, from mainstream news. Learned a new CPU flag. It's hilarious. Whatever setting there, some people, so some users apparently have this that their device never is leaving this 400 megahertz throttle state. So amazing, thin and glued together the devices are. Nowadays, leave me in the comments below how amazingly you find this. Determining what component is errors, uh, error mostly setting this bidirectional processor running hot is difficult. Which yeah, it's so stuff is so complex with. We just had this, right? Apple T2 chip, right? Super connected, complex stuff. And then even like Apple shipped this stuff more throttling. Major YouTubers made videos about this latest MacBook throttling more than they should. And Apple tweaked the firmware a little bit, allegedly shipping the firmware out in the states that they were not supposed to ship it out. But yeah, there you see it. Even the original device manufacturers do not have their complexity under control. And erroneously, not really sure. Maybe this stuff most likely is thermal throttling, right? So yeah, not uh, also the laptop stuff has this Alcantara stuff, keyboard stuff. So you can't even open this while other stuff you can open with a hot air gun, the surface laptop stuff with this uh, glued Alcantara keyboard stuff. You can't even open most likely without destroying, overheating all the plastic, uh, bending all the keys, plastic keys on there. So yeah, not amazing stuff. Speaking about Microsoft, let's quickly check for comments here, which we may, or of course we have some. Um, what's about 10, we are 10, seven nanometer. Yeah, also this 10, seven nanometers in the comments uh, below there. This is not comparable TSM. So Intel measures some finer. I need to actually look this up. I once read this a couple of years ago. They measure like some measure the, the whole gate to gate or so of the transistors, others. Um, of the field effect of the others measure real structure sizes. So the, the numbers, you need to be careful. Um, Intel was usually like, I mean, fun fact, Intel of all, they were measuring like larger, larger structure. So most of the other like TSMC, they, they just have like some structural like inner gate. I need to look it up. So yeah, this is comparing. Unfortunately, I, I wish there would be standard, but you know, marketing reasons, I mean, it's, it's uh, actually surprising that with all the marketing reasons, Intel is not scamming the most of these numbers. One thing where, Apple, uh, where, where Intel is more honest, there's some value in Magnetic Levels tool 
programmers for the cool watch speed moves. Uh, well, 400 megahertz. Um, yeah, that is uh, yeah back to 1990. Um, no, this is not back to 1991. This is back to 400 megahertz was like I think maybe 2000. To yeah, I would guess estimate 2000. So a little bit faster. Um, and um, basically, anyone can set it to whatever. No, not really sure if everyone can set it to whatever I would expect. So they say here peripherals. Um, also, um, some of these MSRs are locked, right? So, for example, virtualization stuff, if there is usually for some stuff like security related virtualization, there is a enable interlock bit. So, usually back in the day, a decade ago, it's like some stupid uh, Sony Vario laptops and such, they disabled virtualization and set the lock bit so you could not even re enable it. So, this model specific registers often you can't re enable necessarily. In other news, speaking about Microsoft, they have an amazing um, security only update here. And why is this news verse? Microsoft and Symantec have identified an issue that occurs when a device is running any Symantec or Norton antivirus program and installs an update for Windows that are signed with SHA-1 um, certificates only. The Windows update dates are blocked. So yeah, the recurring callout of snake oil, in my, in my opinion, just having a huge attack surface with all the uh, de un unpacking, extracting, zip, rar, and all the complex archive stuff, especially with this zip bombs and, st and stuff, uh, error prone stuff. And there you see it, even this stuff is so much snake oil, in my opinion. Um, yeah, run a secure operating system, some antivirus stuff usually only causes more security harm than good. And on top of this, if you run some on Windows, I would only run this with this Microsoft Windows Defender there at least. As much as I don't like Windows security vulnerabilities, at least I would trust Microsoft more. As sad as it is, then they have some sane baseline scanning stuff. Then apparently here you see Zemantic and Norton and McAfee and whatnot. And yeah, it's hilarious, right? So your antivirus blocks a security update from Microsoft with a, with those latest, well, latest and greatest, but newer um, certificate. It's like. So, so seriously, 2019, you can't make this up. And why I point this out here in this uh, security horror show and daily soap opera that is this security news. So yeah, the Windows updates are blocked or deleted by the antivirus program during installation, which of course, yeah, can't make this up. It's, it's hilarious. I hope you enjoy this. Good luck for you at this and hopefully run some open source system like Linux and BSD and something of that sort. Speaking about uh, snake oil and stuff and uh, our Russian neighbors, I think. Um, Kaspersky, antivirus user idea law, third party web trapping. Yay, exactly what you wanted your antivirus to do, right? So it turns out they are injecting some uh, in this network, right? I mean, it's hilarious. So your antivirus injects some identification, identification number in all the web traffic. Apparently, uh, to me, it's a little bit, um, I wonder how they, um, inject is, is this probably not an HTTPS traffic, so probably another reason why you want to run with HTTPS unless they um, men in the middle of this, but whatever. So apparently they injected there some, uh, where is it, started 2015 and paid and free up to 2019 displayed this behavior and um, included a, so JavaScript, so the problem was some JavaScript form a Kaspersky server loaded from an address that included a unique ID for every user. Yeah, what could possibly go wrong? You also wonder how can security companies come to this amazing idea? So JavaScript, Kaspersky, Labs, some ID, main JavaScript. And yeah, so this, of course, in other words, any website that can read the user's Kaspersky ID and use it for tracking in the same unique universal unique identifier comes back or appears on another website, the same operator they can see that the same computer is being used. So yeah, amazing snake oil antivirus. There you have it. Can't make this stuff up. And we rushed through. So it was only 1144 drop frames, 1.8%. Um, of course, Friday for future, uh, North Atlantic Ocean currents, which warms Northern Europe may be slowing. We are, so how bad might global warming be? Apparently to some scientists, we are maybe 50 or 100 years ahead of the predicted computer models. Uh, scheduled with a slowdown for yeah. If this is like this, well, it is certainly bad. And if this is true, then yeah. 
Maybe uh, gamify your life, maybe uh, get some extra points of showering, less taking car less, uh, walk to the supermarket, whatever you can, maybe Friday for Future Challenge, try to save 20%, which certainly would be a good start, drive 20% less car, um, buy less plastic stuff uh, in the supermarket and all the stuff that could accumulate, fly less to one conference, uh, join with go to meeting or whatever the video conferencing stuff might be. Fun fact, I nearly never fly to conferences. I could every quarter. I don't. I have one next week. I attend by telephone conference, uh, not only for cheapskate and money, but also certainly for um, not wasting so much oil there in those transatlantic flights to the States and uh, fun stuff like this. And uh, yeah, what do we have in the FSB antivirus? Uh, yeah, either you take uh, NSA or FBI antivirus, right? It's not really that other companies are that much better. Only makes it more complicated, more uh, heuristics like that, uh, using something similar, little snitch here on Windows 7. I didn't know that Windows 7, uh, that little snitch, I thought little snitch is a Mac OS thing. Yeah, fun fact, this little snitch, uh, I only knew this from Mac OS, fun fact, it blocks our own software activation sometimes, so sometimes people write us an email every week, I can't activate your software, and usually our template response is, have you already tried to turn off your little little switch firewall? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's sad. Um, and... Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this news. Uh, AVB heuristic Z, and yeah, that is not funny. And I'm still in Russia, fly back soon. And um, yeah, if they let me out here. Uh, also, not so fun fact, uh, just the other day, some Airbus emergency, uh, emergency landed uh, in a field uh, not too far away here. Um, if you are into that news, I could have shot it as an Airbus Moscow corn field. So I think everyone is alive, only if you were injured and uh, yeah, Moscow Times or something of, yes, I'm not a robot. Yeah, this is going, no, you have the, oh, come on, I don't want these bicycles, then you don't. Anyway, and uh, this was just 20 hours ago. Um, thanks God everyone is alive and it didn't crash on this house and just on some cornfield. And everything is good and wonderful and um, let's hope this doesn't happen to us caused by just some birds so similar to this before you blame Russian maintenance this is similar to the emergency landing in the Hudson River what this was in New York just with some flying through some birds so the only one as far as I know allegedly died are some birds and um, what else do we have opinion technical uh, what is your opinion on technical Certificates, W certification. So you mean like training? Well, I think b basically I'm personally not the greatest fan, but I can see how this is some valid, way, some way of employers to select who has at least some kind of level of understanding. Um, for that kind, it can certainly be helpful. I, of course, have not a zero Linux certification, as I'm well, I don't really need it. This and. I certainly, with 20 years of running Linux distribution, have a lot of inside knowledge and for me it's a little bit totally waste of time to train, certainly to, to pass this, like answer these questions without internet lookup, like how to set up internet on Red Hat, would not even know what to answer there. Um, I know the IP tools and if config and stuff. Maybe they would answer other answers, so not really with this near. And as you see from all the error and issue analysis and stuff, uh, I just run s trace, GDB and stuff, or fire up a quick internet search. But this is certainly not what um, of this IPv6 or stuff. I've read something 20 years ago and then it takes some hours to get going, nothing like some Linux certificate probably would have questioned, maybe my IPv6 knowledge would have been good enough for that. But if you get need to something get going, this help if you are like, my, my biggest issue of waste of time with IPv6 was that the provider, my, my DH client from bind was not sending the prefix option uh, hint. And then I basically only wasted the time. I was like a huge Googling debugging session when just the server did not return the uh, dedicated IPv6 prefix. 
that was assigned to us just because, I mean, stupid DHCP, DHCP, implement, DHCP implementation in the server side of this ISP. And um, so for that kind of thing, I'm more of preferring real knowledge and the certifications are, from what I've seen, often a lot of memorized answers to some questions. But again, for really employing lots of people for administration purposes, maybe a good means to select those who have at least some knowledge. But again, even if they, they can pass this with flying numbers and just have memorized those questions and not be very good in troubleshooting. So yeah, maybe probably nothing beats interviewing those people and quickly finding out do they have really some knowledge or just memorize those answers. But yeah, leave me in the comments below. Leave me in the comments below why um, you ask about this, what is your opinion and in general in all of those opinions of those topics. Hey, no, no new drop prems, only 1144 going through. Uh, did I even show this? Yeah, I think I showed. Anyway, here, so not too far away from here, uh, fun things that happen when you are abroad, some nuclear stuff explodes and some uh, Airbus emergency lens in a cornfield some miles away. Um, but that's life, that's what we are here for. And I hope you enjoyed this and learned something. And um, with that, I hope you enjoyed this live stream and learned something. And uh, as usual, looking forward to your comments and uh, opinion. And uh, if you have something amazing to share, you see there is so much stuff happening each week. We don't have really a shortage of um, yeah, finding stuff that is probably worth, I hope, to point out. And I hope to see you soon for our next videos and live streams to come.